Whenever you visit a web page or submit a form or basically take any action that would make a request, the client will make an HTTP request to the server. The server will then take this request and process it and send back the response to the client. This basically is what an HTTP message is. It's how the data is exchanged between the server and a client. The structure of the HTTP message for both request and response is actually similar. Both request and response start with the start line. For example, request request starts with the HTTP method, request URL and protocol version, while response starts with the protocol version, status code and a status text. Then both request and response contain the HTTP headers. Headers basically allow the client and the server to pass some additional information. There are many headers and I'm going to leave few links in the description if you want to read up more on headers, but basically these headers are usually grouped in categories like request headers, response headers, representation headers and so on. And finally, they both contain the body and body is what contains the data that is associated with the request or the data or document that is associated with the response. As mentioned before, there are many headers and you don't need to know all of them. You'll get familiar with them as the needs arise. For example, accept headers can be sent with requests to indicate what formats are allowed and preferred for the response. Then there are headers related to authentication, user agent, caching, refer, cookies, and so on. The location header for example can be used to redirect the user to a different page or a URL. Set cookie header can be used to send a cookie from the server. Then we have a content type header that can be used to specify the type of the resource which basically tells the client what the type of the returned content is. Along with the headers and other things that are returned with the response I mentioned that it also contains the response status code and the status text within the first line. There are also a lot of status codes and I'm going to leave the links in the description for you to check it out if needed, but we're going to review the most common ones. We have 100 through 199, which are informational statuses. We have 200 to 299, which are successful status codes. For example, 200 means okay, 201 created simply means that the resource was created, 204 means that everything was okay, but there was no content returned and so on. Then we have 300 to 399, which are redirects. 301, for example, indicates that it was moved to a new URL, while 3 304 indicates that it was not modified which is mainly used for caching. This way the client can use the cached version if it wasn't modified. Then we have the 400 through 499 errors which are the client errors. 401 is unauthorized, 403 is forbidden and the difference between the 401 and 403 is that 401 actually is unauthenticated meaning that it should be used whenever a user who is not logged in trying to access something. While 403 is for a user user who is successfully authenticated but is trying to access a page or perform an action where that user does not have the necessary permissions to do so. Then we have a well-known 404 not found and 405 method not allowed. 405 is used when the server does not allow the specific request method that's being made. For example, if you make a post request to a certain route while server does not support the post method on that route, you might get that error. And finally, we we have 500 to 599 errors and these are server errors. 500 is internal server error for example and 502 is bad gateway. So now that you know the basics of the headers and status codes, let's actually apply that to PHP. Let's open the dev tools here and let's refresh the page. As you can see here we see the status that is 200 means that the request was successful and we got the 200 status code. If we inspect that request, we see all sorts of information here. We see the request URL, the request method the status code and the text. We see the response headers here. If we scroll down, we see the request headers such as accept, user agent, and so on. If we switch over to the response tab here, we see the HTML document that was returned. So let's close this out and let's see how we can make use of headers. Right now, if we visit a page that doesn't exist, let's say we visit some kind of full bar page, we're getting this route not found exception, which is not that user friendly, right? If we open the dev tools and we refresh page, we see that the response status code is actually 200 okay, which is not okay, right? We're getting page not found exception, but the response status code is 200. So we can change this and fix it to send the proper status code, which is 404. Now to do that, we need to catch this exception, right? So we can catch that exception within our application where we resolve the route. We could essentially wrap the whole thing in a try catch block here, or we could just wrap the resolve only, but let's wrap the whole thing so we have some kind of exception 
exception handling. Then we can catch either just the route not found exception and add the handling for that or we can catch all kinds of exceptions and then render some sort of generic error view. For now though I'm just going to worry about the route not found exception but in general it's better to catch all kinds of exceptions and have proper handling for them. So for now we're just going to worry about the route not found exception. We'll catch that. And let's simply echo out the get message to be sure that it's working. Let's refresh the page. And sure enough, we don't see the fatal error anymore. We just see the error message. So what we can do here now is that we should simply render some kind of 404 page, right? So let's simply echo out the view make and we load up the 404 page from the error directory. So we'll do error 404 and now we need to create 404.php view files. So let's create the 404.php within the error directory. So we'll add that in and we're simply going to say 404 page not found here. Now I'm not going to implement any fancy UI here because because that's not the point of this lesson but the point is to get this view rendered whenever user visits a non-existing page so let's close that out and let's refresh the page now and sure enough it's rendering the page the problem though is that the status is still 200 okay so we need to send in the header with the proper status code we can send headers in PHP using the header function we can do HTTP slash 1.1 404 not found and I'm hard coding the protocol version number here with HTTP 1.1, but we don't need to hard code it. We could use server super global to access the protocol version. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. Let's refresh the page. And sure enough, we're getting 404 not found as the response code. And we're also rendering our custom error page. There is also an easier way to send in proper status code header, and that is by using HTTP response code and specify the response code. We can comment this out, refresh the page, and it still sends in the 404. Do note that headers must be sent before any output is sent. Remember that headers already sent error that we got within the cookies and sessions lesson. So that's the same problem that we would face if we were to send in headers after the output. Though the output buffering fixes that and we covered that in that lesson. So go back to that lesson and watch it if you're not sure what I'm talking about. In addition to output buffering to handle with such errors, you could also use headers underscore send function to check if the headers were already sent before sending headers. So we got the 404 page working. Let me get rid of this and let's work on a few of the other headers. If we go to the home controller, we have this upload method here where we're uploading the file and then we're simply var dumping something. Instead of var dump, let's simply redirect the user back to the home page indicating that the file was uploaded. We can use the location header for that. So we can do header location and simply specify the URL where we want to redirect the user to. So in this case, we're redirecting user to the home page. You might want to redirect them to some kind of success page, but we're not going to do that for now. Now let's go to home page and let's upload some file and let's hit upload. And sure enough, we were redirected to the home page. And as you notice, the status code is now 302 and not 200. And as you remember, 300 statuses are redirect statuses. If I open up the storage directory here, we see that file was uploaded successfully. The header function accepts two additional optional arguments and one is replace and the other one is response code. So when sending headers, you could actually specify the response code to accompany that header. And the second argument when set to true, it's going to replace the previous similar header, but you're able to pass in false, which will allow you to send the same type of header multiple times. All right, let's do one more header. Let's say that after we've uploaded this file we want to download the file and for this example I'm going to assume that the file we're downloading is PDF so that I could demonstrate and I'm also going to hard code the name of this file so first thing we need to do is we need to send in the header content type and for the content type we'll specify that it's application PDF then we'll send in another header called content disposition with the file name that we want to download it as. So in this case, we can say my file.pdf. And finally, we just need to read the file. So we can use the storage path here and I'm going to simply hard code this file name. And to get this to work, we need to register this route. Now let's do download and execute the download method. Let's visit the download route, hit enter. And sure enough, we're downloading the PDF file. For some reason, the file name did not work. So let's check it out what happened. If I open home controller, I have a typo here. We need an equal sign here. Let's try it again, download. And sure enough, 
stuff now the file name is there something i forgot to mention earlier is that when we're redirecting a user for example here we need to actually exit the script otherwise the code after that will still execute for the sake of this demonstration i'm going to use the unlink function to delete this file so i'm going to put this right here and let's open that storage directory the file is there we have the file for 620 2021 and if i try to upload 619 2021 we see that 620 2021 was deleted but 619 2021 was uploaded which means that this section right here actually got executed even though we redirected the user so that's why to make sure that no code gets executed after we need to add the exit statement and you see that phpstorm is highlighting it here letting me know that this code is unreachable so we can get rid of it now this is not the best way to deal with the requests and responses and sending headers and so on having a request and response classes where we can create objects from would be pretty cool right imagine we had a request class that we could inject into this method and then we could use that request object to get all the necessary files or all the necessary get and post parameters we could also create a response object and send in some headers and so on and that's actually possible by using existing proven packages and components that do a lot of these things out of the box and do it in a much better way as i mentioned before we're not going to be building full mvc framework from scratch instead for the project that we'll be working on will be using some of those existing packages in these lessons when i'm covering the topics i'm simply showing you how it works and giving you the basic idea so that once we actually pull in these packages it all makes sense and you know how it actually works so don't think that our project will look something like this it's going to be different and we'll get to that in the third section of the course this is it for this lesson thank you for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it share and subscribe and i'll see you next time